In this question, a schematic representation of a 1D graph generator is shown in the figure. A belt B of thickness H and width B made of a material of dielectric constant epsilon R running on two fixed wheels is set into motion with the help of a small electric motor which is not shown in the figure. Linear speed of the belt is V. The belt passes between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor which is here connected across an accumulator of terminal voltage V. The plates of the capacitor are a short distance D apart and do not touch the belt. Charges appearing on the outer surface of the belt is collected by the brush B1. So on this side, on the left side, the charges accumulated on the belt are collected by this brush B1 and fed to a spherical conducting dome D of radius R to create the desired high electrostatic voltage. The charge on the inner surface of the belt are collected by brush B2. Uh, on this right side, the charges are collected by this brush B2 and this is connected with ground using a meter. A meter A. Neglect size of the holes cut into the dome. We can consider it a perfect sphere without any holes and the holes size is negligible. Neglect size of the holes and cut into cut into the dome at the entrance and and the exit of the belt. Find suitable expression for the following. The surface charge density is sigma p of polarization charges or bound charges on the belt when leaving the capacitor. Uh, let us do this part first. So, here we have the capacitor plates. Hai. These are the capacitor plates. We uh, separately draw kar lete. And uh, suppose these belts hai. Suppose this is the belt. Thickness of this belt is given as H and uh, gap between the plates of the capacitor is equal to D. So charge on the capacitor plates uh, at, at any time will be equal to, this is connected with the positive side, this is plus CV. Charges will be on the inner surfaces minus CV. So plus CV and minus CV where C is the capacitance of this capacitor. What is the capacitance? For director constant, I am using symbol K. I am more comfortable with K, so I am using K as epsilon R. So what is C equivalent? What is the capacitance of this system? So capacitance of the system can be given by epsilon naught. Suppose plate area is equal to A divided by this H distance is in this dielectric medium and D minus H distance is in vacuum. So D minus H for vacuum plus H for the medium but for medium dielectric constant is K so we have to divide by K. So this is the capacitance. From capacitance we can find the voltage and we have to just find this bound charge on the surface on this surface and on this surface. So what is the bound charge magnitude of bound charge bound charge density is given by this result. This is a very famous result. I am just writing the magnitude. So bound charge density magnitude wise this is equal to free charge density into 1 minus 1 by k. So what is free charge density? So free charge density will be equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. This is the charge divided by the area of the plate. This is 1 minus 1 by k. Uh, we have to just write the value of c here and this a will be cancelled. So from here I can write C as epsilon naught and area will be cancelled. So this is epsilon naught V. This is K minus 1. 1 K will be in the denominator and this K will be multiplied by D minus H. So K into D minus H plus H. So this is the answer for the first part. This is the bound charge density. Now in the next part we have to calculate the charge Q collected by the spherical dome after time t measured from the beginning of the operation and we have to assume that all the polarization charges collected by the brush B1 are transferred to the dome and there is no leakage of the charge from the surface of the dome. So whatever charge is on the left side of this belt is carried by this B1 to this dome there is no leakage in between. So we have to find the charge accumulated which is represented using Q in time t. What is the charge accumulated on this dome in time t? So for that 
I have to uh, I should write the length of the brush which crosses this capacitor in time t. So length of the brush which crosses this capacitor in time t will will be having the polarization charges on it. So what is the length of that brush which is passing in time t? So let us write for part b length of the brush sorry length of the belt length of the belt crossing the capacitor in time t crossing the capacitor in time t and obviously this is equal to vt so this length is equal to vt and uh, what is going to be charge on this so charge on this will be equal to q and this is equal to polarization charge density multiplied by the area area of the brush which crosses the capacitor in time t and what is the that area so that area that area is equal to so we have given the width of the belt is equal to b this is the inner width and uh, this is the length which is crossing so area will be b v into t this is the area so this is charge and for sigma polarization or sigma bound this is sigma polarization we can use this expression earlier expression we have calculated in part a so you know, this expression multiplied by b v into t this will give us this charge so for b this is the answer we have to just write the value of sigma p in this expression for third part current i shown by the emitter what is the current shown by the emitter which charge is crossing through the emitter so charge on this right side is passing through this emitter and in time t what what is the charge which passes through this emitter will be equal to the charge collected by the dome because uh, on this surface the charge will be negative and uh, on this surface there will be same charge but it will be positive so charges are, are like this this is positive charge this is negative and this is again positive and this is negative so whatever we have calculated for part b this is also valid for part c in terms of charge so this is the answer for b and the answer for c i have to write this is current value of current and this is charge divided by current it is just a linear function charge is just a linear function so simply a differentiation we can write differentiation of this or simply write q by t so q by t will be equal to sigma p b into v so this is the answer for c part this is the current shown by the emitter we have to find a steady state charge q on the dome considering the air as medium of very high resistivity so the surrounding air has some resistivity and uh, if resistivity is rho then conductivity is sigma is equal to 1 by rho so this is the conductivity given in this part so whatever charge is coming here due to some kind of conducting property of the surrounding medium this charge starts leaking this charge is leaking here so what is the current flowing in this environment in this surrounding what is the current flowing uh, that current flowing we can also find using this formula j is equal to sigma i where is uh, this is the current density and suppose this current density i am calculating in the vicinity of this dome just outside the dome and this electric field will be just outside the dome or we can say at the surface of this so initially this charge will increase and from that this electric field will also increase and as electric field increases this current density the current which is going in this environment or in the surrounding this current density increases or current increases so charge is coming from here charge is coming like this and also the charge is leaking out charge is going in the environment and obviously initially the rate of leakage rate of leakage or we can say the current which is flowing in this surrounding will be less as compared to the rate at which the charge is coming on this dome through this brush b1 so this rate is high initially and this rate is low but 
as the charge is increasing this electric field will increase and this j will increase and the amount which is leaking will increase at some time after some time there will be a steady state at and at a steady state the rate at which charge is coming through this brush will be equal to the rate at which the charge is leaking through this uh, environment which is has some conducting property so we have to just equate these two things and uh, what is the rate at which the charge is coming through the brush b1 is simply equal to this current so for part d i am just writing this current as i1 so let's say this is i1 and uh, whatever charge is going in the environment suppose i am writing this as i2 so this i1 and this i2 should be equal at this particular instant of a steady state so i1 we have already calculated from this part c so this is i1 this is sigma p b v and what is the value of i2 for i2 we have to multiply the current density j with just area at the surface 4 pi r square this is the area and this current density j is equal to sigma e and we are given sigma is 1 by rho so j is equal to e by rho this is e by rho which where e is the electric field 4 pi r square what is the value of electric field electric field is equal to k q by r square and k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught and this q will be the steady state charge and this is r square this is rho this is 4 pi r square so from here we can find the value of q we already know the value of sigma p sigma p sigma p we can put from here and the value q which will come out as from this calculation we can find this value q for this part this is equal to rho b v epsilon naught square k minus 1 into this voltage v this is small v is velocity and this capital v is voltage potential difference of the batteries and this is k d minus h plus h so this is going to be the answer for this part and coming to the next part or last part e at sufficiently high voltages the dome loses charge into the surroundings by a faint discharge process known as coronal discharge uh, in this situation there is some kind of electric you know, dielectric breakdown and uh, the medium becomes conducting because of the breakdown find the steady state charge q on the dome during corona discharge if the current density in air during corona discharge is given by the following relation so in part d j is equal to simply e by rho and in this situation of corona discharge medium is getting breakdown medium has dielectric breakdown so this extra part is added into this this is some beta times which is a constant beta times magnitude of the electric field and this e vector so j vector is equal to e vector by rho and uh, this relation is is used in d part but that only difference is uh, this is some extra part due to this uh, breakdown so method is similar to the part d there is no difference uh, I, I have to write the i have to write the similar expression this is sigma p b v for j i have to write this for j we can write i am writing this magnitude so this is e by rho 1 plus beta e. i have taken e as common and uh, this uh, e is just simply magnitude so sorry there is a mistake taking e as common this is 1 by rho plus beta times e and for e again we have to write this q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square so all the things we have to put like just in the part d there will be a calculation in this question because in this kq by r square in this expression there will be kq by r square and again for this electric field you have to write the kq by r square so there will be q square and q and there will be quadratic in charge q you have to solve that quadratic and write the answer using solving that quadratic so calculation will be slightly on the higher side uh, we cannot say there is calculation but uh, expression will be lengthier i am just writing the direct answer 
you just write electric field is equal to this in terms of charge and there will be quadratic in q and from there you can just simplify it simple quadratic equation but expression is just linear 2 pi epsilon naught r square rho beta and obviously there will be a root because we have a quadratic equation this is 1 plus rho square epsilon naught beta divided by pi r square again k minus 1 b small v capital v divided by k d minus h plus h and this minus 1 so this is the answer for the last part